Rachel. I'd like you to meet Fred and Wilma. And this is Bam Bam. <gasps> Everything's gonna be okay. This is solid ice. It goes for five miles from here to the open ocean. Three gray whales are now trapped in walls of ice. Wondering what those true stories were that inspired the movie Big Miracle, starring Drew Barrymore? Here's the problem. Well, the three we can tell you one of the true stories, because Minnesota-based Casco Marine headed there soon after news reports like this one began airing in October of 1988. The three gray whales were trapped off the coast of Barrow, Alaska, and their plight quickly captured the world's attention. Everyone is talking about the poor whale stuck under the A major ice. rescue operation was mounted, but attempts had ended only in failure. Rescue workers are trying to get to the whales Transport with a ship helicopters to set out to bring in an ice breaking ice barge, but failed. But it's been a long haul. An ice grinding machine didn't work either. Helicopters tried dropping an ice smashing weight to no avail. Soviet icebreakers did agree to come to the whale's aid, but they were days away. So, the rescue efforts were left to chainsaws and muscle. Mostly Inuit and Inupiat Eskimos worked feverishly to open breathing holes through the thick ice. But the battle to keep the breathing holes clear was getting more difficult, as temperatures kept dropping. Then Greg Farian, who was part of the Casco Marine family, happened to catch a bit of the evening news. Else to open the holes in the ice today. A helicopter. I had heard a, uh, the end of a, a news story about three whales stuck in the ice in Barrow, Alaska. A light bulb went off in my head. Immediately, I, I had a solution to the idea as to how to help the people up in, up in Barrow, Alaska. And uh, that idea was using a Casco de icer. Since the 1970s, Casco Marine had been making de icers mostly used by marinas and fish farms. You're bringing the warmer water from below the surface up and melting the ice or keeping existing areas open. So, Greg immediately picked up the phone and didn't put it down until he reached the head of the rescue mission in Alaska. The person in charge up in Alaska that I finally was speaking with basically hung up the phone on me and that was when I made the decision that it was time to go and show these guys what the Casco de-icer could do. Greg called his brother-in-law, Rick Skluzacek, a Casco marine engineer and quickly convinced him to help get the Casco de-icers to Alaska to save the whales. Eyewitness News has learned that two local people have an idea that could save the three whales. Without any reason to believe they'd be permitted to join the rescue mission, they grabbed two Casco de-icers and hurried to the airport. Can help the distressed whales. As soon as they arrived in Barrow, Rick and Greg set out to convince the rescue mission officials to let them help. The Minnesotans were greeted coolly and told only, We'll think about it and get back to you. Rick and I went back to our bunks um, somewhat depressed due to the fact that we did not have a go on, on this mission and a lot of money had been spent and uh, we were going to be in deep trouble if we went home without, without having make, make, made this idea work. Hours passed, but finally, at 4 p.m., Rick and Greg got word from the rescue officials. They would have their chance to prove themselves. The workers were facing negative 30 degree temperatures and were in a losing battle with the ice. With the breathing holes closing, the three young whales were in danger of drowning before the night was over. The rescue officials now looked to the Minnesotans for one final attempt to save the whales. Rick and Greg hurried out to the rescue site and found the whale's breathing holes filled with chunks of ice and covered with slush. And we put the machine in the water. It was, it was uh, phenomenal how quickly the machine cleared the ice in the hole. The units started working immediately by pushing the slush to the edge of the breathing hole. Within one to two minutes, the first one popped out, then the second one came up, and then the third one. And it was just a joyful event on the ice at that, at that point. By morning, all that slush was gone. There was never any doubt in my mind that the de-icer would clear the ice. As I use a Casco de-icer on my own boat in Minnesota in the wintertime, with temperatures as, as, as low as minus 30 to minus 40 below zero, I, had, I knew that for sure that there would not be any problem using the machines up in Barrow, Alaska. It's these Minnesota-made products that everyone here agrees have kept this project going. 
With the success of the Casco de-icers, the rescue officials quickly came up with a new plan for the mission. Open up more breathing holes to lead the whales out to deeper water. Rick ordered 13 more de-icers from Casco to keep the additional breathing holes ice-free. Through 16 inches of ice, and it's getting thicker. The de-icers from Minnesota are keeping the holes open for the whales. But even with the newly cleared breathing holes, the youngest whale could not overcome all of the stress and wear and tear that he had already endured. The whale, named Bone by the rescue team, died less than 48 hours after Rick's and Greg's arrival. The worst moment was after doing all this work and actually seeing hope and a light at the end of the tunnel was when we lost Bone, the smallest of the whales. The night that Bone died, um, I think the, the morale, the overall morale, everybody was down and it was, uh, there was some folks back, uh, back at the search and rescue hangar that gave a little pep rally for the next morning and the whole idea was um, we still have two left, let's get them out to the open water. The workers had cut nearly four miles of new holes, and the de-icers kept them open. mountain of ice called a pressure ridge. But the pressure ridge was too thick to cut through by hand. The whales would have to wait for the icebreaker to force its way through the pressure ridge before the path to the open sea was complete. Meantime, they're dependent on Greg Ferrian and his machines. I'm sure they know what, they're, what we're doing for them. I, I, I get the feeling that they do. Greg and his brother-in-law, Rick Skluzacek, have been taking 12-hour shifts on the ice, tending their life-saving machines. Whales' lives, that is. Daddy, can we pass the whale? It was like eight nights, and I was out on the ice when the icebreaker came in. We were very elated when the icebreakers finally made it through. It pulled within a quarter mile where we were standing that night. When the two gray whales swam off to open water, it did seem to everyone at the rescue mission, as well as to the millions of people around the world who'd followed every hurdle and every success, that they had witnessed a big miracle. A big miracle that had hinged on the small but powerful Casco de-icer machines. Also on the and ice two today, Minnesotans', Minnesotans determination to help Spusiac. save the trapped gray whales in northern Alaska. The whales alive in the ice. Saves the day, everything's go! And that, is one of the true stories behind the movie, Big Miracle. Everything's gonna be okay.